Welcome in to Fiery Ron's Home Team Barbecue and another edition of the Coach Mike Houston Radio Show. Thank you for being with us. We're just around 7 o'clock, and for the next hour, we'll be talking about Citadel Bulldogs football, and they've got a big in-town rivalry game coming up this weekend with Charleston Southern. More of that coming up in just a little bit. Please, though, to do, be joined by the head coach of the Bulldogs, Mike Houston. We've got fans, alumni, we've got cadets on hand tonight, and we've even had... Uh, band company members coming in and out of here so we've got a good group and we've got a big show uh, planned for this evening and so how are uh, things with you today coach good good we just we literally just walked off the practice field a few minutes ago and so scrambling to get in here on time but we had a good a good practice today so uh you know week's week's been pretty good and excited uh, excited for saturday night the Bulldogs are a 2-1 and one, uh, team after their loss at Georgia Southern over the weekend. And so, uh, you know, looking back, I guess, Coach, upon further review, you often hear a coach say that, you know, things might have not seemed as bad when I looked at it on the tape. Sometimes they don't look as good when you take a look at them on tape. So upon right. further review, talk about uh, post-mortem Georgia Southern. Well, you know, obviously uh, we were playing a very, very good uh, FBS football team. Uh, you know, they went undefeated in the Sun Belt last year in their first year in that conference. And uh, I don't know that they're not uh, a better team this year. I mean, they, they have a lot back on offense, uh, a lot of size and just tremendous speed and and a uh, very, very experienced, uh, very confident uh, football team. So uh, they played very, very well. They, you know, their abilities and, uh, and talent had some to do with uh, – you know some of our mistakes, uh, but you know really we had we had about nine critical errors on the day uh, that really you know just really killed us. Uh, uh, if you get beyond that, uh, our players played very very hard, and I thought we really competed well at the point of attack. I thought our offensive line uh, played well uh, the bulk of the night. I thought our defense played well the bulk of the night, and that, that sounds crazy giving up uh, 48 points, but you know when we have you know, we have the turnover issues that we had, and we put the the situations that we had against a team like that. Uh, you know, they're going to you know they're going to put points on the board. So, uh, but you know, it's a it's an experience to learn from and and to grow from for our for our roster. A lot of those, a lot of the guys that played Saturday night had never never played in a game like that, and uh, uh, so you know, being in that situation now, they have the experience uh, going into the next time they have a you know a big stage. I had not done a game at Georgia Southern in 13 years, and I know it's things had, a bit. Yeah, I know things had changed for me as far as what I saw. But even talking to people who had been there two years prior to that, right. I mean, there's a there's a significant change to the place. They had uh, they got room to seat 25,000 people, and on the day you played them, they uh, they almost had 24,900 in there. So right. uh, they they've got it going a little bit, and they've got their people behind them as far as the right. crowd goes. And you know, at times during that game. Did you think, wow, this feels like, you know, what what you might experience in a first game of the season instead of a third game of the season? Well, I just think that uh, you know it feels like what uh, you know what 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 you want it to feel like on game day. You know, they uh, they obviously have tremendous support there and uh, have put a lot of money into that program, uh, and uh, you know there's a lot of emphasis on it there at Georgia Southern. So uh, you know they it's it's a good 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 college football. Uh, uh, venue there so the Bulldogs will get themselves back to home base over the next uh, two of the next three weeks uh, they will have home games not another road game until the 17th of October we've got a lot to talk about during the show uh, we'll take questions from the audience obviously we'll take questions by Twitter uh, coaches at Citadel underscore coach I'm at Mike Leg tweets and so you can get involved there we welcome our audience in the building our radio audience our uh, YouTube audience as well joining us live this evening. And so we got a lot to do on the Coach Mike Houston Radio Show. So let's step aside for our first break. Come back with more in a moment on Sports Radio 1450. Style. Selection. Service. Quality. value. See what everyone is talking about. Ashley Furniture Home Store.
Hey, Ron's home team barbecue in West Ashley. This is the Mike Houston Radio Show. My name's Mike Legg. Thanks for being with us. Whatever method you are using to access the program tonight. I mentioned Twitter before the break. Let's bring in uh, one more address for you to pay attention to. At Citadel Football, if you want to tweet a question there, it'll get to us pretty easily. Or at Mike Legg Tweets, we will take your questions or comments also uh, by text or by uh, by napkin or whatever the case may be. But uh, glad to have you with us wherever you may be this evening at uh, Fiery Ron's Home Team Barbecue, our new home for the Coach Mike Houston Show. A few things about the Citadel Bulldogs, uh, and then we'll get back uh, toward the thing that we talked about at the beginning and the thing that people are talking about the most this week, and that is the game that's coming up this weekend at Johnson Haygood Stadium against Charleston Southern. So we wanted to uh, kind of walk around a few different things with regards to the program, uh, Coach. One thing, you have the uh, Southern Conference's leading rusher and the young man who is fourth in the country in rushing on your football team, and that is a fullback who is seeing playing time this year for the first time ever. He just had his third college game, yeah. and that's Evan McField. Uh, let's go back a little bit, if you will, as to uh, th- this was a young man that you redshirted a year ago. Right. When did he make it quite evident that he's going to be a factor in your rotation at fullback this year? Well, probably, you know, back during spring practice. You know, coming out of high school, uh, you know, we took a chance on Evan, and he took a chance uh, coming here. He was a, a very small partial scholarship player and, uh, and got here and, 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 and showed some ability early on, but really had to change his body and has worked very, very hard to do that. And uh, I don't think he's anywhere near his, uh, his potential yet, but uh, in spring practice, he really showed us a lot. And then, you know, back that up with uh, his performance during fall camp. And so uh, and it's great to see him be able to translate that onto, onto the game, game field on game day. He had a big run the other day. He was through the line of scrimmage in the blink of an eye and went 60 yards. Now, that was surprising. <laughs> I mean, Evan is a big – he's a big, strong runner, but he's not known for his breakaway speed. So I don't know that any of us expected him not to get caught. Yeah. So, But uh, obviously a 60-yard run against a, a team that has the speed of Georgia Southern, uh, you know, he's – yeah, he's obviously a little bit quicker than we than we thought. Yeah, so. he had over a hundred going anyway, but the sixty put him at one sixty three uh, for the ball game, and uh, so uh, a good outing in that uh, particular football game. Uh, what about uh, what about we had Tyler Renew slip back over from uh, from a slot right. to a full back to play, and then right. uh, Isaiah Smith's absence. What do you think his status will be for this week? He should play Saturday, okay. and, and we we expect to have all three of them Saturday. So uh, that'll be good going into this game, and uh, you know it's it, we we have a, a little bit of a luxury there of, of having three guys that have significant experience, and it creates tremendous competition there. And uh, I think we're able to always have a fresh guy in the ball game, and and uh, you know, so it, and, it, and it allows them to push each other too. I did a little quick math, and if you were morphing those three guys together, you would have an average each game of 30 rushes and 181 yards. So your fullbacks are putting up some numbers. Well, they have been, and uh, you know there will be a time and a place where that shifts to somebody else. Uh, and, and like we've talked about many times. When you're running the triple option offense, there's obviously three, three phases to it, and uh, a lot of a lot of what is there on any given uh, Saturday is predicated by what you know what the defense is doing. Uh, so you know there will be a day where Dominique has a huge huge ball game, and there will be a day where Vinny and Cam have huge ball games, or possibly someone else. But, uh, you know, right now the fullbacks have been playing very, very well early in the season. You weren't gone away from home for very long, but now you're back for two games over the next three weeks. And so Charleston Southern this weekend, then an open date, and then Wofford on October the 10th. So you've got a pretty steady dose of home cooking coming up here. Yeah, it's good to be back home. And I wish I wish we had more games at home <laughs> later in the season. But, uh, you know, it's good to be back uh, in Johnson Haygood Stadium and, and back in front of our alumni and fans. And, you know, the Corps of Cadets have been fantastic uh, in both games this fall. They were especially impactful during the Western Carolina game. I think it's the loudest I've heard them, uh, you know, since I've been here for this year and two games. Uh, and so I think Captain Peluso, you know, he and I have worked, uh, uh, you know, together to try to bridge the gap between the, the Corps and, and, and the athletes, especially the football players. 
uh, and I think he's doing a, a tremendous job of, uh, of encouraging that, and, and, the, and the Corps has done a great job of cheering us on. They sure have been loud. There's no question about that, and it's good to have that. The atmosphere as a whole just seems to be uh, better. It's, it's awesome uh, whenever things are going well for your football team, things kind yeah, of follow. It, and at the end of the day, we all represent the same school. You know, they go to the class together on the same day, and, you know, we're playing another institution. You know, we're all in the same boat together, battling, battling the bunch on the other sideline. So it's great to have them with us. Later on in the show, and uh, obviously this has given Coach a little bit of a preview on it, something that I was curious about was uh, the day in the life of a Citadel football player. And we'll talk <laughs> about that a little later on. Coach can tell you, I'm sure, with great detail what all goes into that day. Obviously, it's a packed one. And then I thought, why not ask about the day in the life of a Citadel coach? And so we'll get into those things a little bit later on in the show, but just a little bit of a preview of something that we want to talk about as the show goes on here today. So uh, uh, I know that it's going to be a, a, a healthy little list, and that's okay. Yeah, it's so. a long day now for both of us. <laughs> so the uh, Bulldogs come out of a, a game at uh, Georgia Southern. Uh, Charleston Southern is the opponent coming up this weekend. The Bulldogs have a uh, distinction that they have had before. They still uh, have, but right now the Bulldogs are the leading team in the country in rushing offense. Uh, again, that's not a huge surprise whenever you, uh, whenever that, that style of offense is a big part of it there. But uh, right now you're the leader of the pack in that category and in a lot of others. Well, you know, obviously the ultimate goal is to win. Uh, and that's more important to me than any stats. Uh, but, you know, if you're going to run this offense, then obviously the goal is going to be to lead the country in rushing offense. We've done it several times uh, in my career. We, in 2013, we set an all-time uh, record for the NCAA for most rushing yards in a season. Uh, I forget what the number was, but it was, you know, 5,000 yards or so. So uh, it's, uh, you know, it's, if, you're going to, if you're going to do what we do, then you want to be the best at it. So, uh, and certainly that's translated into a lot of wins. I had even noticed that uh, Derek Satterfield had mentioned that uh, there isn't a team in any level of Division One football that is averaging more rushing yards per game than you are. And, of course, you lead the FCS in that category. Right. So that's a pretty good, uh, pretty good statistic there, too. So uh, defensive side of the football. Seems like I said James Riley's name an awful lot the other day. Yeah, he's playing really well, which I'm really excited for him. You know, last year you could see the potential so much, uh, but he would make so many mistakes. And, and I think it's just a new system, new staff, getting used to each other because he has, he has a tremendous amount of talent. Uh, and probably the only negative I can give you on James right now is that he's a senior. And yeah. I, I, just, I, I enjoy every day with him. And, you know, I was a linebacker coach for the first, you know, 10 years of my coaching career. And so I'm always, you know, close to those guys. And, you know, to have two like James and Tevin, uh, you know, we're really blessed and fortunate. And so I'm going to enjoy every day I've got him. Tevin Floyd was someone else I was going to mention. He's doing quite well with uh, with numbers. We call Dondre Copeland's name an awful lot. And so – you know, they say when things are not going well, then your secondary makes all the tackles. Your linebackers are making most of your tackles. For yeah, you. which is good. Yeah. And, that, and that's true to an extent. It depends on the team you play. Uh, you know, it's, there are some teams that uh, the safeties do make a lot of plays. But uh, right now, you know, with, with the spread offense that we're facing, our linebackers are, you know, they're in there a lot. And, of course, some of that is because our D linemen are doing a great job of, of, of funneling the play to them. So uh, I just – I think that, uh, you know, we saw in the first three games and even the other night just uh, what improvement we have made on that side of the football over last year. Yeah, I would agree with you there. There's no doubt about that. Uh, Mitchell Jeter has moved up. Uh, I think he's now sixth among uh, career leaders in sacks, and, uh, and Riley's behind him very close, and so things are uh, going well in that category too. So they've uh, put up very productive careers. Uh, as they have gone along. And so uh, time for us to take a break here. We're going to come back and we're going to get into a little bit more about the, uh, the team that uh, everybody wants to talk about. The Bulldogs are preparing this week to take on Charleston Southern from just 16 miles up the road. And when Coach and I come back, we'll dig into that particular opponent. That's coming up next. This is the Mike Houston Radio Show on Sports Radio 1450.
Welcome back to Fiery Ron's Home Team Barbecue in West Ashley. This is the Mike Houston Radio Show. We welcome you back. My name's Mike Legg with the head coach of the Citadel Bulldogs, Mike Houston. The Citadel Bulldogs back at home this weekend to take on Charleston Southern in a 6 o'clock ball game at Johnson Haygood Stadium. Our network coverage flagshipped right here on Sports Radio 1450 begins at 4 o'clock on Saturday afternoon. Uh, Jay Harper has our number one, and I know that among the guests that he will have is one of the new inductees into the Citadel Athletic Hall of Fame. He will talk with Stephanie McNeil. Uh, we'll uh, visit on uh, the inductees coming up in just a little while from right now. But that's an hour one of our pregame show. In hour two, we always sit down with the offensive and defensive coordinators for the Bulldogs, uh, Brent Thompson and Marie Straighton, and, of course, uh, Coach Houston's uh, pregame thoughts as well. The CSU game this weekend, it's a week later than it was a year ago uh, when the Dogs played at uh, Buccaneer Stadium. And uh, so, Coach, is that one – I mean, uh, take it from your coaches to your players. Uh, does it feel like this is one of those games where the guys kind of have the proverbial circle on the date on the calendar for this one? Well, you know, the thing is with, with each game, we try to compartmentalize that game. Uh, and keep it to that week. And so, uh, you know, for our, for our football team, this game is the most important game of the year because it's the only game we have this week. And, uh, and that's the way we're approaching it. And, and so, uh, you know, our goal is to go out and try to play uh, absolutely as well as we can on Saturday night and try to find some way to pull out a win against a very good team. Uh, and so that's, you know, that's really where our focus is. This is a uh, game that uh – as a lot of people talking, obviously, CSU is 2-1 and one on the season as well. Uh, they got a 41-14 victory over North Greenville, which is a, a team that will appear on the Bulldogs' schedule next year. They lost to Troy, an FBS opponent, 44-16, and then they beat ETSU last Thursday night, 47-7. So they had a few more days than the Bulldogs have to prepare for this particular ball game. We've talked about this before, particularly last year, but uh, this goes back to other coaching stops for you and for their staff too, but you have uh, you have coaches that know one another quite a bit, just like you have players who know each other quite a bit, because you're going to you're gonna bump into one another right away when you're sure. 16 miles apart. Right. Yeah, and you know, Coach Chadwell and his staff were at North Greenville University when, uh, when I was at Lenore Ryan, and uh, so I think he got there in 2009 was his first season. So we faced him, I guess, four four times before he left. Um, and so uh, you know it's a uh, you know a, a deal where we know we know most of his staff fairly well. And then uh, you know obviously have gotten to, gotten to see them again uh, last year when uh, when we got here. The uh, Bulldogs and the. Uh Buccaneers go on at uh, 6 o'clock on Saturday night at Johnson Haygood Stadium with uh, another move in that rivalry. Let's dig right into them just a little bit. Again, we hear the word spread option when it comes to their football team. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, they, they run out of a lot of different formations. Uh, you know, they're going to run uh, inside veer, kind of like we do. Uh, they're going to run midline. It's obviously out of out of the shotgun, but it's the same, the same play up front. They're going to run the belly. They're going to run the belly option. They're going to run trap, trap option. Uh, and a lot of play action off that, and as well as you know, as well as a pretty good drop back game. You know, they've got two quarterbacks. Um, one is a transfer from UAB. Uh, the other, uh, you know, they recruited him and signed him. You know, one you know throws it extremely well uh, and runs pretty good. Uh, the other one runs extremely well and throws pretty good. I mean, it's a they have two guys that are truly dual threat quarterbacks, and both of them have something that they do a little bit better than the other one. Uh, and so it makes them very, very dangerous with uh, all the weapons that they have at the skill positions and the experience they have on the offensive line coming back. Austin Brown is the transfer from UAB. He started the first two ball games, but then did not play in the game, over, uh, went over ETSU. And so Kyle Copeland did play. They also have a local product named Danny Krogan, who played at Bishop England High. And so uh, three quarterbacks there. Uh, Krogan saw playing time last year, but Copeland and Brown have been the guys who have seen action in all of uh, the games where they were able to go here. So uh, I know earlier in the week you said you, you, you expect that you'll likely see both of those guys. Yeah, I would expect to see both of them, and we're preparing for that. So uh, and, we, and we saw both of them last year. So it's, uh, it's uh, you know something we'll be prepared for Saturday night. Now, with your offense, you have a specific – I mean, we talked about the numbers that are being put up by the fullback right. position, for example. They look more – 
like no fullback, but tailbacks that kind of run the ball there. Is that accurate? Well, yeah, but, they, you know, they're – their tailbacks are a little bit bigger, uh, and so uh, obviously they have guys that uh, you know aren't as big. They have a little bit, a little bit better speed that they may use just for perimeter plays. But you know all their running backs are very, very good between the tackles, downhill uh, ball carriers, very physical. Uh, you know, very fundamental. Do a good job with ball security. So it's uh, you know they've got guys that are very good between the tackles. They are tenth in the FCS in rushing because mainly. Uh, of uh, Darius Hammond. He wears number 24. Yep. He's one of their top guys. Yeah, he played, played well against us last year. Had a big punt return for a touchdown, which is, uh, you know, a critical turning point in the ball game uh, last year, it being a two-point loss. Uh, you know, obviously that's a big play. And, uh, you know, he's, he's having a great year this year, big, strong runner, uh, actually from the same high school as our Javier Hammond. And uh, I think they're, they're cousins. So, okay. uh, you know, a little bit of, a little bit of uh, Family family deal right there, sure. So, uh, but he's a good ball player. They list themselves as a 3-4 defense. Is that the type of front you would expect to see all night or I, not much? No, I, th I mean, I think we're going to see some three-man front, but we're going to see a lot of – I think we're going to see a lot of different fronts. I, you know, I, would, I wouldn't be shocked if we saw three different fronts Saturday night. So Sometimes it's hard for me to see both sides of the right. ball when looking at the football, you know, on game days. Uh, what did you see at Georgia Southern? Did you see a lot of eight-man front there? Did they stay oh, yeah. pretty much traditional four? Well, no, they, 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 had a, they had a four-down lineman set, but they were an eight-man box. Uh, and they, you know, they really crowded up in there on us and uh, did a very good job with their scheme. And, uh, you know, as, of course, you know, that, the defense coordinator, Jack Curtis, at Georgia Southern has been there for a while. And so he is – he was there when Coach Munkin was there, and so he is used to practicing against our offense. So he, you know, he understands how to defend the flex bone. Gotcha. What about Charleston Southern? Uh, we talked about their fronts on the, but but what about their defense as a whole? Well, I think they are, you know they return a lot of experience in the secondary. Uh, some very talented players there. They return good experience at linebacker, and and you know probably the leader of their defense there. Uh, you know they got some new guys on the defensive front, but they're you know playing very very well there. So I think as a unit, uh, as a whole, um, it's a very solid group. Special teams. Let's go into that a little bit with what they have on that side of the ball. Well, you know I think it's probably the reason that uh, that that they won the ball game last year was their performance on special teams and our our poor performance on special teams. They had the punt return for a touchdown. Uh, we scored a, to get it within two, and then they have a kickoff return that gets out to almost midfield and gives them very good field position. Ends up giving us a long field to drive uh, when we finally got the ball back there uh, towards the end of the ball game. Uh, and so I think that that's going to be something that's going to be critical. Um, you know, Saturday night uh, we talked about Hammond, uh, but you know they have solid guys in the return game. Uh, you know, you know, good good punter. Uh, you know, they'll they'll incorporate both a traditional. Uh, traditional style of punting and a rugby punt uh, on Saturday night, and so you got to prepare for you know two different two different styles there, uh, and so they'll they'll be very very solid in special teams. One more thing before the break, and it's because it's the one that people want to ask the questions about. But this is not a team that's on your schedule next year. Can you talk about the status of the series, or if it's still in limbo, or what what are your thoughts on that? Well, you know, like like I said last week about Georgia Southern, you know. Jim Center nor I were involved in scheduling anything this year, next year, and for the most part, the year after that. Okay. Uh, I think we may have one or two dates open in 17, but uh, for the most part, our schedule's set all the way out uh, through that. So, uh, you know, I, th I think it, I said, I said yesterday that I, I, I think it makes sense for two schools that are the same size, same classification, uh, and so close together. I think it makes sense for us to figure out some way to play each other, but you know, at the end of the day, that'll be up to the administrators at both at uh, both institutions to you know work something out. That does seem to be something that's way more common now than it was before, and that is that you will see teams announce, particularly like teams FCS teams playing guarantee games right. later, 17, 18, 19, and then you hear big programs, maybe you know Notre Dame and Oklahoma, announce that they're going to play in. 2022 i mean it is yeah. commonplace for schedules to be made significantly sure. far out well and the thing is you you, you got to find common dates you got to find uh people that want to play you uh and you know if you can find a home and home that's great because that takes care of you for two years uh but it's just you know everybody has a certain you know something in mind as to what they want in scheduling and and who they want to play in scheduling and so it's uh 
Uh, and then you get into the guarantees. You know, it's if, if we don't have a return game, then you know you're you're paying somebody. So you get into all that stuff too. So it's a it's a lot of work putting together a schedule. No question about it. The Citadel Bulldogs are home for two of their next uh, th in two of the next three weeks. A uh, game at uh, home on Saturday, six o'clock against Charleston Southern. Then an open week, and then Wofford comes in after that. And so the dogs will be able to stay at home and sleep in their own beds for a little while longer. Lots more to get into with the coach when we come back to Fiery Ron's Home Team Barbecue in West Ashley as the Citadel Bulldogs prepare for the Charleston Southern Bucks. Lots to do still yet. Again, we mentioned the uh, the Twitter addresses. You can get at Citadel Football to get a question to us or at Mike Leg Tweets. We'll be checking those throughout and knit those passed along. We also take questions and comments from our audience as well. More with the coach when we come back to Fiery Rons in just a moment on Sports Radio 1450. There's more for you at Substation 2. Since 1975, Substation 2 has been serving slice-to-order, freshly made subs on our specialty New York-style bread, piled high with the finest meats and freshest produce. From the number 19 Super Special with seven mouth-watering meats and cheeses to an assortment of specialty sandwiches and salads, Substation 2 proudly supports the Citadel Bulldogs with two locations in Charleston and 43 locations throughout the Southeast. Seven thirty-three. We welcome you back to the Mike Houston Radio Show from Fiery Ron's Home Team Barbecue in West Ashley, the brand new home for the Coach Mike Houston Show. I wanted to mention one thing uh, that uh, that uh, sometimes is assumed to be otherwise. We are going to be, and I say we are going to be here next week to uh, to talk Citadel football with the coach. Though the Bulldogs do not have an opponent the following uh, uh, weekend, the the Saturday after the show. Uh, but we will be here to recap what goes on with this weekend's game and talk about some other things, maybe even some outside-the-box things. Uh, the Bulldogs just uh, came off the practice field. Coach, you mentioned you had a good day uh, workouts. What about, the, uh, what about the rest of it, Monday, Tuesday, stuff like that? Well, I thought, you know, coming back in Sunday night, uh, you know, we come in Sunday afternoon, watch the previous day's film with the kids and, uh, lift and then practice Sunday night and uh, I thought they, the kids really responded and were very positive Sunday night and came ready to go back to work. Uh, Monday's our day off for the kids and so the coaches, you know, we spend all day Monday from early in the morning till, uh, you know, late evening, night, uh, you know, preparing for the next opponent and so uh, good day there but uh, good practice Tuesday, good, good practice this afternoon. Uh, I expect us to have a a great practice tomorrow and really sharpen some stuff st stuff up and get ready for Saturday. So that, uh, that type of detail leads me into something I mentioned we were going to talk about earlier, and that is uh, when you are a uh, student in college, you have a lot to do, obviously. Yeah. When you are a, uh, an athlete in college, you have even more to do. When you're right. a cadet at the Citadel, it's even more than that. So. Right. Let's talk about the day in the life. Pick any football player you want that's on your staff. 
and talk about when their day begins and all the different things that they do and when they can finally lay their head down and right. get a few winks. So, uh, fire well, away. You know, it's, uh, it's different than most, uh, most college athletes uh, because, you know, our kids start pretty early in the morning. You know, they've got to get up uh, – uh, well, well before seven, uh, probably you know six fifteen, six twenty. Uh, you know, could even be earlier than that if there's something else going on. Some of them have to get a workout in in the morning. So if they if that's the case, then they're up, you know, at five thirty uh, in the weight room. Uh, but uh, they have uh, morning formation at seven ten, and then they go eat breakfast, and they've got classes all morning. Uh, they've got lunch formation, so they'll go do that and, and go to lunch, and then uh, after that they may have a class or two. Uh, right after lunch, and then they come over to the football building and, and get taped and dressed and treatment, or if they haven't had treatment previously in the day. And then you have meetings for somewhere around an hour uh, in the afternoon, and then you go on the field and you practice. Um, you know, they finish practice. You know, their day, they still got more to do. They, they, they go to dinner, and then after dinner, they, uh, you know, they have study hall or evening study period until, you know, around 10 o'clock at night. And then they get to they get to go uh, lay down and, and try to get some sleep, and they got to get their stuff ready for the next morning before they do that. So it's a pretty long day. No doubt. There's uh, plenty to do. There's no question about that. So uh, then that leads me to uh, what goes on day in the life of a Citadel coach. I mean, uh, for example, your guys are at the office now while you're here yeah. with me and our audience. And so uh, differing things going on on a Wednesday, for example. But right. uh, talk about the day in the life of a Citadel football coach. Well, it you know, it's – yeah. I'll tell you this, it's a long day, but it beats what I could be doing for a living because it's a, it's a very enjoyable profession, and I love what I do, so it, it does make it a little bit easier. But, you know, I usually get up around 5.15 in the morning and uh, pretty quickly get out the door and, and get to the office, and, and I usually try to get a, a little quick uh, workout in, you know, before we get going, but we, we'll meet at 7 a.m. Uh, each morning, and, uh, you know, everybody's got their stuff kind of prepared and ready by then, and we start with film at 7, uh, and that – you know, that goes all the way to lunch, and then you get a little little short break at lunch. You know, I'm usually eating at my desk or working on something or, or doing something uh, uh, there during that time. And then we come back and you meet, you know, for a little while and prepare for the player meetings in the afternoon, and then you go practice. Uh, you know, after meetings and practice, it just depends on what day it is. Uh, if it's Wednesday night, then, you know, we have something brought in for the coaches to eat, and they sit at their desks and – make recruiting calls and when I finish the radio show here I go back and I may get on the phone with a couple of recruits you know somewhere or, or whatever and uh, so it just it depends on what uh, what day as to what time we get done and you know you think about the weekends and you know really the only time that you have on the weekends is you know we feel strongly about Sunday mornings and so uh, our staff has Sunday morning off until we meet at 1230 and that you know that way if you know uh, someone wants to take their family to church and you know they have the ability to do that, and so uh, that's kind of that's kind of my family time with Amanda and the kids uh, is Sunday mornings, and then you know maybe maybe one night a week we'll get dinner or something together. So talk about what type of coach you are. If you go back to your office, it's late, and you got somebody sleeping in a chair. Is it an attaboy, keep it going, or <laughs> is it get out of here? You got to nah, get home. They, well, so. no, I, I promise you. As soon as <laughs> as soon as they get done with their work, you know, it's they they they, they get out of there. So you know, you, you got you got to do what you got to do. But I'm a firm believer that you you know don't don't mistake activity for achievement. You know, we're not going to be there unless we need to be there. We're going to put in long hours, but at the same time, I believe very strongly in in family. And so any time that we can. We can make it home before the kids go to bed and at least see them, uh, you know, or have that uh, that that a couple hours on Friday morning or, or Sunday morning to, to see them. I think that's very, very important. It's September the 23rd. What are you allowed to do with regards to recruits right now? We're able to call them and talk to them right now. Uh, you know, you can do you can make a, a phone call a week and, uh, you know, the the interaction beyond that is very, very limited. Uh you can direct message them on Twitter, but I cannot text message them. Okay. Now, don't ex I have no idea what the difference is. <laughs> okay. You know, to me, there's no difference. But that's mm -hmm. the NCAA, uh, you know, rules there. But, uh, you know, which I, I, I think you're going to see some changes in that in the next year. Uh, but, you know, it's you're allowed very limited contact unless they come onto campus. Now, we have – we'll probably have 100 recruits 
uh, high school seniors at our game Saturday night. Uh, and so we'll have them and their families there. And so you can spend a good bit of time with them at that point. Uh, we have a letter writing program where, you know, I write a couple of recruits every day, a handwritten note just uh, about our program and about them. And, uh, and all of our coaches do that every day. So we, you know, we've got that going out. So there's a lots of things you can do, but you're also limited in how you can do it. That is a lot of moving parts if you have 100 kids and families. So yeah. talk about who arranges all of that and whose job it is to take care of all those J.P. Gunner really spearheads. He's yeah. our recruiting coordinator. And I'll tell you, he, he does a great job. He does a great job with organizing you know, stuff like our game days. Uh, he does a great job with our recruiting weekends in the month of January. Uh, you know, it was his program, the letter writing program is a program that he, you know, talked to me about when I first got there. And I think it's, it's fantastic. It made a significant uh, difference with a lot of our recruits last year. You know, parents expressed to me that, you know, it made a difference that they get a handwritten letter from the head coach, you know, three or four times during the fall. Interesting stuff. I'm still shaking my head a little bit internally about the whole Twitter versus texting. Yeah. Because uh, Facebook comes into play. I mean, the younger kids do other forms of social media that yeah, I listen, don't. They, I mean, our, our coaches really had to work with me to get me where I can use Twitter. So I'm, <laughs> I'm not the most techno-savvy guy. So, But a couple of our young coaches, I mean, they're, they do all kinds of stuff. So Now, the only thing that makes sense to me about the text versus the direct message is – I don't necessarily know on my phone when I've gotten a direct message on yeah. Twitter, but I know when I have a text message because it makes a noise. And then, you know, I don't know if that has anything to do with it or not. That's know. a head scratch. So <laughs> maybe know. they'll uniform that one up a little bit as we uh, we go along there too. So, and it's funny that I would use the word uniform because the next thing I have marked on my list is uniforms, and it's a, it's a question invariably that I get is what uh, what are the Bulldogs going to wear when you you put out the six combinations. Uh, so far, uh, you've, you've been in white the last couple of weeks. So right. uh, what do you do this weekend? We'll be in our duty uniform uh, Saturday night, which is our lead, lead top and lead bottom. Okay. Uh, and it's, uh, you know, it's in honor of what the cadets wear uh, around campus and to class every day. Uh, and so it's, uh, and it's really another thing that we're doing that really bonds, uh, you know, the core and the, and, and the uh, core squad guys together because they look, you know, they look the same every day. So it's, uh, it's an idea. This uniform's uh, – the idea for this uniform was from Kevin Yeager, our equipment manager, and he came to me with it uh, last spring, and I thought it was a great idea, and so we ran with it. So lead on top, lead on the bottom, and then you've got the, the white helmets. Um, I see sometimes in, in, the, in the photos that you'll have guys in black shoes and so things of that nature, so I guess that's a – a, a floating type of a scenario there. So now you know, folks, it's the duty uniforms that the uh, Bulldogs will have. They will say dogs on the front. Uh, and so uh, that's the uh, that's the update on what's going down this weekend with regards to uh, the uniform that the dogs will be in when they play. It's Hall of Fame weekend, and on Friday there will be the Hall of Fame induction ceremony. Five new uh, people will be inducted. Uh, the uh, first female to be inducted will go in on Friday night. That is Stephanie McNeil from track and field. A couple of baseball players, Randy Korn and Mike Pendleton, will be enshrined on Friday night. Uh, Milton Williams III is a swimmer uh, that will be going in. And Dr. John Moore, otherwise known as Turkey, <laughs> is an honorary member. And so he will go in there. I don't know. Uh, Dr. Moore, but anybody with a nickname of Turkey has a he great is a, story. He is, he is sure. just an outstanding person and has been very supportive of me and the staff since we were hired, and so uh, really excited for him and his family with this honor this weekend. I would say you've had the occasion, uh, having been here now for uh, quite quite a bit of time now, well over a year and a half, that uh, you, you've met some interesting characters, I'm sure. We have. We have. And I'll tell you, I've really enjoyed it. It's one of the the one thing that has been just a pleasant surprise is just how how involved the alumni are, how supportive they are, uh, and uh, you know they care about our institution and they care about our program. And so it's it's uh, it's good to be somewhere where where football matters and where people care about the institution. Is this a big game for those types of folks this weekend? Every game is a big game for those types of folks. <laughs> I mean, there's not a. I said at the press conference the other day, there's not a week that we have a game that uh, our alumni don't give me some reason why we have to win that game. Where it was Jimmy Reed was telling me, you know, he lives up in western North Carolina, 
uh, in uh, Cashers, and he was telling me, you know, you you have to beat Western because <laughs> I can't go walking around Cullowee and Cashers for another year with a with a loss. So, uh, you know, it's uh, every every game is a big game for us. He's happy with you then after yeah. uh, knocking them off a, a couple of weeks ago, twenty eight to ten. And so, yeah, I would think that you do hear the words need to get this one. Yeah, quite often there. So we do, uh, and, and certainly I've heard that this week. Yeah, that's a good, uh, it's a good thing. Bulldogs have CSU this weekend. The Buccaneers and the Bulldogs, six o'clock on Saturday. Time for another break. Come back with our final segment with the coach in just a moment. This is from Fiery Ron's Home Team Barbecue, where the Citadel Coaches Show with Head Coach Mike Houston originates. This is the flagship station of the Citadel Sports Network, and we'll be back with more in a moment on Sports Radio fourteen fifty. Oh, I needed to deposit a check. I was about to head to the bank, but out of nowhere, it just started to rain. Like, really rain. I did not want to go out. But then I was like, duh, just use your phone. Mobile deposit techno thingy to the rescue. I'm Raina, and I bank human at TD Bank. We are back at Fiery Ron's Home Team Barbecue in West Ashley. This is the Coach Mike Houston Radio Show. My name is Mike Legg. Thanks for being with us. We've got about 13 minutes left in the program. Remind you that there will be a show next week during the idle week or the off week. Uh, which do you prefer on that, Coach, I guess is a good question. I had... Uh, I had a coach once say to me, there's nothing idle about that week. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, how do you no. feel about the verbiage used for a, an open date? Open date. That's okay. a good way to put it. Okay. So, you know, obviously we'll be very busy next week. Uh, uh, we will practice uh, the bulk of the week. Um, it'll be a, a week to work on some things. It'll be a week to, to heal up some guys. Um, it'll be a week for us to get out on the road a little bit recruiting. We'll kind of have a skeleton staff a couple days next week and – Get a couple of guys out uh, on the road in some uh, some area schools, uh, and then I get the opportunity. I'm speaking at the uh, the Orangeburg uh, Touchdown Club on uh, Thursday, and then the Sumter Touchdown Club on Friday. Okay, so yeah. get a chance to go to go there. My partner Lee Glaze probably hooked you into the oh, yeah. Sumter one. Yeah, he did. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Now you... he's got he's got to take me to dinner though. Okay, so that's I think that's fair. Yeah, I think that's fair. You'll enjoy that group. They're a good group and. Uh, Anytime you can get around and uh, and not uh, terribly far away from home and no, no, get a chance to speak to some of those folks, it's great. I know you do a lot of that during the summer. Uh, right. Get a chance to, to uh, go to some of those uh, particular events there. So uh, I, uh, since we're at uh, Fiery Ron's, I guess you no, know, no. Normally, uh, you're pretty similar on what you eat, but you changed up your menu tonight. So we got to talk well, about yeah, what you ate. Well, we lost last week, so gotcha. I had to change it up. So I had the chicken chili tonight. It was great. So okay. uh, I would I would highly recommend it. I think uh, I think Owen and Reed are back there piling into a, a, a bunch of nachos, which I've heard are outstanding. But yep. uh, I didn't know how that would be on the air. So <laughs> <laughs> well, that is a uh, that's good stuff. There's no question about it. You can always find some great things here. And if you have an event coming up. 
You can contact the folks here at Home Team Barbecue. They can certainly cater any event that you want to do there. And uh, so we encourage you to talk to our uh, our friends here, Aaron and Tony, among the others. Uh, Richie and Morgan are here tonight as well. And so a uh, great place to be, whether you come in for lunch or whether you come in for this particular show. Uh, we encourage you to uh, spend some time at Fiery Ron's Home Team Barbecue. Got a location here. Got a location in Sullivan's Island as well. Now, we had a passing of someone important in the world of sports, someone that has dominated the conversation today. And uh, so um, Yogi Berra uh, passes away over the in the last 24 hours. And so I'm wondering if you have a, uh, a favorite uh, yogi-ism, if you will, because there <laughs> are so many. many. There are so many. We were reading them today, uh, you know, around the office, and uh, and so everybody did walk by and they'd quote one or whatever, and I think <laughs> uh, if you don't know where you're going, you'll end up someplace else was pretty good. That's a good and, one, yeah, uh, yeah. All, all pitchers are, are, are liars, so, uh, or crybabies, yeah. <laughs> so it's, uh, you know, he, he, he had so many of them, but I can remember when I was a kid, uh, you know, growing up and playing baseball, and and he was managing the Yankees, or just retired from managing the Yankees, and was around the game a lot, and and uh, you know what an impact. You know, looking back at his career, you know, maybe one of the greatest catchers of all time, and and uh, then a great manager after that, and so certainly a iconic sports figure. I heard one uh, shouted from the bar a little while ago that was the one, and I want to tell the story behind it because it's an, an interesting story, and that is. Yogi told someone, he was giving them directions on how to get to his house. Yeah. And he said, when you come to the fork in the road, take it. Take it. it. And the, <laughs> but the thing about it was you could get to his house from either turn. So that's why he said that. But, it, I mean, it's just one of those crazy phrases. Mine was, the one that I like the most is that he was talking to somebody about a, a busy restaurant. And he said, you know, hey, have you ever gone to this one? He says, that place is so busy, no wonder nobody goes there anymore. Yeah. And so that's one of my favorites on Yogi Berra. So uh, iconic sports figure, good way to put it. And uh, he is uh, he lived to be 90 years old. And so we uh, pay our tributes to uh, to Yogi Berra, who passed along uh, a topic that at one time was somewhat hot back to college athletics. Right. That is a little bit back in the forefront this week. Um, on Monday afternoon, the Southern Conference <laughs> Uh, announced that its Council of Presidents had approved a policy to permit member institutions to award cost of attendance stipends to student athletes effective with the 1617 academic year. Later in the day, uh, or somewhat later anyway, on Tuesday it was, Athletic Director Jim Center from the Citadel put out a statement uh, that, uh, that addressed the situation, but in essence said that uh, they are going to announce specific plans as they are implemented. And right. so, no, uh, we're going to. No, we're not going right. to. I know some have fallen on a side already, right. whether it's been leaked out or whether it's been announced. So, uh, I, I guess a couple of different things. One is, what do you think, if, if it's an ideal scenario, what, what do you think should happen? Or should that not even be something that is discussed? Well, I think that... Uh you know it's an important issue because when you start when you start awarding above and beyond a scholarship that already covers room board and tuition books all that stuff all that's covered in a scholarship so our kids get three meals a day they get their uniforms paid for uh, you know they get their tuition paid for you know all that stuff is covered in the scholarship so when you're paying above and beyond that um, it becomes an extra incentive that you're offering for uh, recruits and players and so anytime that you have one institution that is offering that incentive obviously that's going to give them a tremendous advantage in recruiting so uh, I think that uh, I think that you're going to see a lot of people waiting to see what everybody else does and waiting to see how this impacts the Southern Conference um, you know what they have allowed right now is not uh, at, for the uh, immediate future I don't think is going to impact football just yet uh, there may be a point, and I anticipate a point down the road where it will impact football. Um, and you know, I, I think that our institution is committed, uh, you know, to being being relevant, being competitive, and being on the same uh, playing field as every other school in our league. So I would expect us to follow suit there uh, in order to remain competitive. That is a significant amount 
of dollars yeah. for a football program. Yeah. It's a significant amount of dollars for an athletic department yeah. because you have Title IX issues. You can't just give it to one sport. Uh, you know, you've got to have equality there. And, you know, if you start doing it for one set of athletes, you know, how are you going to justify not doing it for another? Uh, and then where does the money come from? You know, at the end of the day, you know, we are not in a Power Five conference. We do not have a contract with uh, all the, the, the TV stations and the bowl you know, the bowl ties and all that stuff that brings in the $13 million that a Florida State gets, you know, from just that. You know, it's, it's very much we have to raise the monies to pay for our scholarships. Uh, and so you talk about raising money on top of that, and it's just, you know, there's only so much. Uh, and, you know, people are willing to give back to the Citadel and back to the institution, but how much? And so the funding becomes a major issue. That's a uh, and and obviously it is not imperative that just because something comes back to the forefront, then you have to have a knee jerk reaction right. and take care of it right away. And I, I really I truly believe this. You're going to see over the next five to ten years a separation in college football beyond what there is now, uh, where I think that you'll see the Power Five kind of get away from everybody else even more than they are already. And I think you'll see issues like cost of attendance that will separate the rest of Division I football, both the mid-majors and the FCS. For example, uh, taking this forward just a little bit, do you think there will be a time down the road where, like your last game of this season against an SEC team, do you think those games could go away after a while? Do you think that's a possibility that you'll have trouble? I think it's a possibility. Yeah. I think it's a possibility that you'll see teams from the Power Five conferences that will not play FCS opponents at some point. Uh, and I think that you'll, you'll see, again, you'll see some, some, uh, some of the FCS schools may make, try to make the transition to FBS just for that because right now, you know, we do not get the same payday for, pe for playing a South Carolina that a, a Georgia Southern gets. That's right. You know, they get probably three times what we get to play that game because they're at FBS school. So... There's so much involved in, uh, you know, when you get into that situation. Now, uh, other games going on this weekend. I'll run over these real quick, yeah. and then we'll talk about the, the upcoming game for the last couple of minutes that we have here. There is a league game. It's VMI at Furman. There was a great league game last week. Chattanooga wins at yeah. Samford. Uh, Samford is at Louisville this weekend. Uh, Chattanooga is at Presbyterian. So there's another, uh, another SoCon Big South ball game, and Gardner Webb is at Wofford. So there's another one. And so yeah. uh, there are a lot of a uh, lot of good games going on here. You're going to finally get to a point where we're going to have SoCon versus SoCon. Right. But right now, there's only about one a week so far. Yeah, and I think all those are pretty good matchups right there. It'll be interesting to see. You know, Furman had the huge win down at UCF. Uh, last Saturday night with a 55-yard field goal to win it. And uh, you have a VMI team that looks to be much improved over last year with, with an outstanding quarterback in Alex Cobb. So it'll be interesting to see what happens there with that game. But really, I think all those games uh, have the potential to be pretty good matchups. It'll be Gardner-Webb and Wofford will be an interesting one. Mm -hmm. All right, your game. And we only have about a minute and a half or so left in the show. But your game coming up, it's Charleston Southern. It's a big ball game. Uh, it is a. It'll be a challenge for you. This is a sure. team that, uh, that that I know you owe one to, if you will, and two, if you go back uh, before your tenure here. So talk about the things that'll make the difference in the game for us. Well, I think it's it goes back to the same things we talk about about every week. I think turnovers are going to be huge in this ball game. If you know, obviously, if we can have a turnover-free game, that's going to going to definitely give us a, an opportunity there. So I think that's a big one. I think the kicking game is going to be huge. It was last year. Uh, both teams are ball control offenses, so if, if one team can gain a strong advantage in time of possession, uh, that's going to be a factor. Um, and then I think, you know, the penalties, uh, you know, as it was a factor last year. Uh, and it goes back to our first two games we did. We, we managed pretty well in those four categories in games, game one and two. Uh, and we have a goal board. Uh, there in our in our offices where we track those four areas and uh, you know we had uh, three stars out of four in both of those areas games one and game two last week we had one okay. so uh, and we barely had that so it's uh, I think those are going to be the big factors looking forward to a big crowd hope the weather uh, cooperates so I think there might be a little bit of rain who knows yeah well we're games one and two we had rain so yeah. we, we did just fine there so whatever it is both teams will be playing in the same conditions so uh, you know, it'll, it'll be what it'll be. Coach, thanks so much. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Go Bulldogs. You.
That's Coach Mike Houston. I'm Mike Legg. Thanks so very much for listening to us, watching, or wherever you may be. And we hope you'll join us again next week for the Coach Mike Houston Show. We're on the air Saturday at 4 o'clock. It's a 6 o'clock kickoff against Charleston Southern. Until then, we thank Barry Daniels back in our studios, and we say so long from Fiery Ron's Home Team Barbecue.